Oh, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Florence. I work as an archaeological consultant in London, um, but today I'm going to be talking to you about the game Near Automata. So just to kind of give you a brief introduction to the game, um, it's a Japanese game produced by Platinum Games. Um, it was released in 2017 on the PC, the Xbox One, I mean, Xbox One and PlayStation 4, sorry. Um, and it's set kind of in the distant future, and it's kind of the premise is there's this proxy war going on between robots that have been created by aliens and androids that have been created by humans. Um, and humans have kind of had to go to the moon to escape from these robots. And you play as an android called 2B, hence the terrible um, pun that I have in the title. Um, and um, you're kind of involved in fighting these um, robots on an Earth where. You know, you've just got the remains of what was previously um, human human habitation, um, and also this game has kind of a death mechanic called the reliquary system, um, which means that when you die, um, you can go back and find your previous android body that's been killed, um, and basically get objects from it um, that you've lost by being killed. Um, and also, when you have the network um, function enabled in the game, you can actually see where other players have died on the map. And you can interact with their bodies and either um, kind of retrieve the objects that they had when they died, or um, you could kind of revive them, which means they can fight with you. Um, and this was something that I kind of thought would be interesting to record um, from an Archaea gaming uh, point of view. Um, when I originally submitted this abstract, I was kind of very ambitious and was like, oh, I'm going to do this. Um, and kind of when I came to it, I realised that I wasn't really sure quite what I was going to do. Um, and I was kind of sort of overwhelmed with all the data that I might need to collect. So I kind of reflected on this and thought, what do I do sort of in my day job? Well, as a consultant, I produce desk-based assessments. So I thought, OK, if I'm kind of overwhelmed by this, I don't know where to start. Why don't I produce a desk-based assessment of this video game? Um, so a desk-based assessment is a report which assesses the nature, extent and significance of the historic environment within a specified area. Um, so normally in my day job, um, I'll produce a DBA as part of the planning process, so a site's going to be developed um, and the desk-based assessment is the first thing that's kind of produced to kind of assess what's the archaeological potential of the site. Um, and kind of look at the historical and archaeological background of it, um, look at cartographic sources, things like that. Um, so I was going to try and apply this to a video game. Um, and you may question sort of how would that work? Well, I consider video games to be archaeological sites. This is something that Andrew um, discusses in his um, book, um, Archaea Gaming, which has recently come out. Um, and I think video games should and can be archaeologically investigated. Um, you know, it may seem that the digital is indestructible, but as we know, it isn't. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, things kind of, you know, games aren't always going to be accessible in the future, and this is true of this game as any other. Um, so there's an argument to record it simply on that basis. Um, and in terms of doing a desk-based assessment, um, this is kind of important in terms of project management, and just as in kind of... Um, kind of field work in the natural world. Um, in the synthetic world, we also have to think in terms of project management and being prepared before we do digital field work. Um, so just as in a desk-based assessment, I thought I'd kind of set myself some aims and objectives, and that was to look at the archaeological potential and significance of the reliquary system in this game in particular. Um, but I also wanted to be quite self-reflexive about kind of using a desk-based assessment. What are the limitations of that? Um, you know, it's a very standardised document and I kind of wanted to question sort of some of the things that we do as part of that. Um, so what was my methodology? I decided to uh, like focus on a particular area of the game in order not to be totally overwhelmed. So I kind of delineated this site outline of an area in the game called the City Ruins. Um, it's kind of this central area on the game map. It's sort of a crossroads um, in the open world environment. Um, and it was also quite a good area to choose because even though there were sort of um, hazards in terms of um, robots and wild animals that might attack you, there were also kind of you know, open areas which weren't as dangerous. So that made it quite suitable um, for study. And another important part of my methodology is um, Taylor's idea of the assemblage of play, which is kind of when you're looking at gameplay, not thinking of the player, um, the hardware, or the actual game experience as kind of discrete entities, trying to look at them as a whole. 
Um, and as well as looking at sort of traditional academic kind of sources, I wanted to look at things like online articles and reviews and things like video capture that have been done by fans, because I think these are also really important sources that I need to look at um, when considering kind of the history and archaeology of video game. Um, and one of the things I really believe is that you can't really kind of understand a video game without understanding the kind of history of the development of the game. Um, and kind of to illustrate this, I wanted to um, put this picture on there of um, the guy who directed this game, it's called Yoko Taro, and he's kind of well known for always making public appearances in this mask of one of the, um, the characters in his game. Um, and he's also kind of notorious for creating these very kind of dark um, existential games. So once you kind of know that, that changes your impression of the game. Um, He's also talked in interviews about being influenced by 9-11 and also there's kind of been speculation that um, the Obama administration's use of drone strikes was very influential on this game because you've got this kind of proxy war between robots and androids. Um, so that's just kind of a couple of general points. There's obviously lots I could go into um, and kind of more I'd like to go into in terms of the in-game world history, um, but I don't necessarily have time here. Um, that's just kind of a couple of examples. Oops, sorry. Right, so um, I did a site visit, which was kind of um, a very basic kind of experimental trial of trying to record the location of player deaths as I encountered them on this map. Um, so what I do is, as you can see, I had this map and I just kind of put little dots on there. Um, I gave each body that I found a number, I took screenshots, I wrote down notes, um, and in some cases took video capture as well. And um, just from what you can see here, um, number 16 up in the corner there, um, just as in kind of in the natural world, in the digital world as well, you found trying to walk around this environment, it was actually quite hard to see player bodies because of the long grass. And this is something that maybe you've encountered when doing surveys anyway. Um, and also, Andrew was talking about glitches before. I found that, um, that a glitch occurred where one body was just sort of like in the middle of a rock, which shouldn't really happen. <laughs> Um, so that could be considered an artifact in of itself. Um, and also kind of when you encounter these bodies, you'll see the player names. Um, and this is something that I was kind of potentially worried about thinking in terms of the ethics of recording this because technically the players haven't consented to me recording the location of their deaths. Um, however, they do remain anonymous because the names that you see are the names that they use to make their save file. Um, so looking at limitations, in terms of the background research I was doing, one of the main limitations I had was the fact that I can't read Japanese. I mean, it's a Japanese game, and I was thinking I can't, I just can't look at any of those kind of sources. Um, but in terms of doing, um, say for example, the site visit, as you can see, um, a big hazard was just robots, which would um, <laughs> sometimes punch me while I was trying to do things, and that's quite a big hazard. Um, and as you can see, it will come up again in a minute um, as the gift's playing. Um, what happens is when you encounter a body, yeah, you can decide to retrieve or repair it, but you can only do one of these. Um, and also, if I decide to retrieve the items that it's holding, um, you know, I'll see that information on the screen, but then the body will disappear from the map. So it's a destructive process. Um, once you've recorded it, it's gone. However, a way around that is to go back to the last save point. So um, these are the kind of things to consider or would need to be considered when doing kind of um, a larger scale kind of survey. Um, so archaeological potential and significance, how do we assess this? Um, well, in the UK, um, one of the things that we kind of look at is um, these kind of different values to assess significance um, as produced by Historic England. Um, and kind of trying to apply these to a video game is potentially um, controversial. I mean, I, I thought it was kind of interesting that you could say one thing that I'd argue is that um, the royalty system as kind of a record of a player community, you could argue it has communal value. But if you were looking at something like aesthetic value, how do you how do you kind of gauge that, especially in a video game, that could be very problematic. And you know, kind of being self-reflexive about this whole kind of process of assessing archaeological potential and significance, um, you know, this really isn't an objective way of assessing significance anyway. Um, so that was kind of something that I was thinking about myself and that would be something that I'd have to kind of interrogate further if I were going to do this. 
So conclusions and recommendations, what was the point of all of this? Um, I think that um, in some ways, doing a desk-based assessment of the game was, you know, there's some aspects of it that seem kind of contrived, like, you know, having the site outline. Um, if you're trying to think in terms of not having discrete entities in the experience of the game, that kind of maybe contradicted that. Um, but I definitely think that doing a desk-based assessment of a game or trying to apply um, the kind of methodology that I would use in that is useful for the project management of digital field work. Um, because it's a way of kind of going in and seeing what's possible or potentially you could find before you actually even start it. And that would be potentially a useful document to create to share with other people who might um, conduct digital field work. Um, and this question of how we assess archaeological potential and significance of a video game is one that, you know, I haven't answered, but it's, it's definitely a really important question. How do we do that? Um, and one thing I was really thinking about was, you know, I've chosen to look at the reliquary system, but is the fact that it's the record of player interaction with the game, does that make it more significant than, say, the death of NPCs, for example? Is it because it's that human element in it, well, the player element, that we consider it, yet yeah, to be more significant? Um, and I think if I were to go forward in this, I kind of, you know, having done that kind of experimental survey, it's definitely possible um, to record the location of player deaths. Um, but, you know, that was a very limited kind of survey. And really, you'd need more people to do this on different platforms to see how that would work. Um, and it would be, I think it'd be very important to involve the kind of wider game community as you're essentially recording their interaction with the game. So, thanks so much.